bridge evaluations, which typically, you know, once every two years, we're giving the bridge a, a really good look through. The ratings aren't as high as we would like it. Um, obviously, if it was a danger to the traveling public, we would shut it down, so it's not in a dangerous position, but just thinking about the age on it, it was originally constructed in the early 1930s, rebuilt in 1957. I mean, we're it's decades and decades old, so just bringing it up to modern design standards. It's also going to kind of redo the roadway leading up to it to meet the new width of the bridge and it's really just a commitment we have to try to address all these aging bridges. It's, st it's still just going to be the, the same one lane in each direction but you're going to have a little additional width. The bridge is going to be several feet wider on each side um, so that's just again bringing it up to just our modern um, highway standards. Um, not that I know of or, or that I heard leading up to this, more so again just looking at the bridges that need some help and a lot of times we may be able to come in and do a maintenance rehab, do some stuff to the deck, do some stuff under the bridge to the substructure, but in a lot of cases as we had talked about earlier it seems like hundreds of projects we're just trying to get these bridges up to really just a, a good working order and, and modern design standard. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at over, well over 14,000 bridges if you count all the bridges on city and county streets. Um, a lot of them are old. I mean, a lot of them out there are 40, 50, 60, some even 70 years old. Yeah. A lot of them have load restrictions on them. Again, what you don't want if it's a major state or even a U.S. highway to have a bridge on that route that some trucks would potentially have to avoid because the load they carry is too heavy. So just that, and also for emergency response to adding a little bit of extra shoulder and it lets folks for safety reasons maybe if they have to overcorrect they may swerve a foot or two it gives them that extra room to correct and you know they're not going to end up running into something that's right there off the center line that's just part of our public involvement that's required um, typically any project has got federal dollars on it as part of the what's called NEPA which is an environmental document that we have to process to to get this project to fruition we have to do the public involvement that involves the open house also stuff we do through communication, social media outreach. We have a website for the folks that can't make it. They're able to go to that link and leave their comments in addition to being able to mail in comments. And we, we take that stuff into account specifically if there's an off-site detour that's really going to be damaging maybe to some businesses. Um, you know, reevaluations could be made. I don't, I don't see that being the case on this one because if you look at it, it's only adding an extra five miles on the mark detour for someone going from Harlem to Thompson. So again, it's just part of us being as transparent as possible to the public to let them see what's coming. That, you know, our consultant team is going to develop that, and the reason it, it's, it's posted on state routes, that's more so for trucks, you're through traffic. More often than not, I think it's the same case here, you've got some local streets that aren't state routes that people can still use to get around during this time. And obviously, if there's homes close up to the bridge, everybody is going to have access. Same thing with businesses, too. It'll just be closed to through traffic during construction. Well, some, some stuff that's out of my expertise, because I'm not an engineer, but we have a lot of innovative project delivery with these bridges, specifically on this one. It's not a large footprint. We're able to accelerate that stuff. Maybe have some free, some pre-fabricated uh, components that we can ship in, as opposed to having to put the concrete and cure everything right there. So there's a lot of newer technology and methods that it sounds like this one could be potentially up for because again we still got a ways to go i mean we're talking april 2021 to actually have the contract released for bid so uh, still still got a little time to develop things we we post it that's the one that we hope people will take more specifically your, your major commercial and truck traffic you know it's not a good thing when they're cutting off and using and beating up city and county roads but um we, we can't force anybody to take the detour you know, that's up to, to locals and also state law enforcement to maybe ticket some individuals that choose not to abide by that. Um, on all our projects, depends on the nature of the funding, um, but uh, federally funded projects, we follow federal regulations. Um, this one, which is federally funded, so we look at natural resources, cultural resources, um, air noise, if there's a component for that. Um, and we do an evaluation, a broad evaluation is, uh, falls under NEPA, National Environmental Policy Act. In this case, it's uh, um, categorized as a categorical exclusion because of the type of project. I mean, as far as contamination, that's more like siltation because uh, it's not like contamination yeah. as, as, as chemicals or what, but um, uh, part of the design will include like uh, silt fencing and, and uh, appropriate 
um, stormwater you know, design features. Um, as far as the water resource, um, that falls under our natural resources, so they evaluated for protected species. Also, um, we evaluated for wetland and potential stream impacts. And any of those, there's regulation that's set up as far as uh, permitting, if we had to fill anything. And then to offset that, there's potential mitigation if uh, a certain amount is uh, impacted. So that's all under the Army Corps engineers. Plus, there's uh, under the state DNR is a stream buffer. So if there's any impacts to the stream buffer, we have to get a variance. We know that this bridge needs a replacement uh, because currently the bridge A was built in, uh, I believe, 1960s and um, it has not been upgraded as yet uh, since then so um, there were unknown foundation information and there were also risk of scar so this bridge needs needed to be replaced now from a bridge replacement perspective there are you know a couple of options that we can do one option is to replace it at the existing location and then close the road and do the detour route. Um, now, from that perspective, what we look at is that if the detour route is feasible, say for if example, if and we look at from a traffic perspective also, that how much traffic does the bridge handle? For you know, we do a daily annual traffic yeah. count to figure out what does the bridge. So based on that, we figure out that okay, the detour length is small enough, the traffic is not large enough we can use a detour route. So that is one option to do replacement of the bridge. The other option is, okay, the detour route is long, traffic is high, it's not feasible to do a detour route. So let's think about shifting the bridge either to the north side or the south side yeah. so that you can maintain existing traffic on the existing bridge, build a new bridge, and then um, uh, basically replace the bridge. Uh, and make, by building a new bridge at a different location and then demolish the existing bridge once the bridge is built and then you can shift the traffic onto the newly built bridge and then that way there is less inconvenience to the traffic. Yeah. However, sometimes that is very costly proposition because when you shift the bridge, you have to tie back to the existing roadway. So when you have to do that, uh, depending on the shift, the length of the roadway becomes longer. Right now, say for example, we have only about um, 1,200 feet of roadway. If we had to, oh, I'm sorry, it's 800 feet. If we had to shift the roadway, we probably are looking double the amount of roadway mm -hmm. construction. Uh, primarily for bridge replacement projects, the whole idea is to only replace the bridge and not to do a lot of road construction. Because the road is fine, it doesn't really need any new construction. So, so we look at from cost perspective whether that option is feasible. So we look at these different options for bridge replacement in our design and come up with the most feasible and cost efficient option uh, that we can use for the bridge replacement. So that basically goes in the preliminary or conceptual design of the bridge. And then once we have the concept approved yeah. based on the clients, which is GDOT, and then public perspective, then we actually go into preliminary design. And then it gets into detail about yeah. structural design and of the bridge. Um, so right now, when you do a regular bridge construction, yeah. what happens is that you basically construct everything at place. So you get concrete, you pour the concrete, you make the columns of the bridges or abutments, then the deck, which is the slab of the yeah. bridge, you also pour that in. And then, so before you pour in, you have to make a form book for the columns as yeah. well, and then you pour that concrete. It's like preparing a mold yeah. for anything. That takes time. Uh, so that's why the bridge construction is what we are asking for is 12 months and road closure for the bridge construction would be only nine months because nine months we can completely construct the bridge and then open the bridge to traffic and then minor road work and everything will take about three months and then we can complete the project now if we have to and that is the road closure that we have to now if we reduce 
uh, or, or if we use accelerated bridge construction methods, uh, then we can further reduce because what we can do is that uh, there are a couple of options of accelerated bridge construction. There is something called a bridge slide-in, there is prefab, um, prefabricated, precast bridge element. So what it means that you can get deck panels, which is the um, slabs. You can get uh, precast columns uh, uh, for the bridge. Yeah. So all of that, there are, there are precast beam caps, which we can be built. So all of that can be done at a different site and then we can basically get in so we prepare the whole and then we basically don't have to pour don't have to prepare molds or anything we just get ready-made stuff and we uh, basically construct but so you still you still haven't made a decision whether or not you're gonna right so considering the fact that we are in the conceptual phase so we we don't go into that much detail of design because to yeah. understand the uh, accelerated design we have to do some structural design of a, of the bridge to see if we do this bridge which is you know yeah. pour in and molds and everything it will cost us this much if we do accelerated bridge construction which will reduce the time it will cost us more because deck panels are expensive yeah. precast columns are expensive because they are built at and then you have to transport them right so they are expensive too uh, so we look at the cost benefit analysis right now say for example we are nine months with regular bridge yeah. construction we can reduce it further by six months with accelerated bridge construction there is three months of time savings but there is x amount of cost associated so we have to do a cost benefit analysis of time savings versus the additional cost we have to do for a bridge construction so that is where our decision will come when we actually go into further preliminary yeah. design so right now we have this we have figured out that the detour is feasible there is not too much traffic so we can probably do this now we have to further see if an accelerated bridge construction can further reduce the road closure is when we do it in a preliminary design so so the traffic is going to increase in design so when we do any road construction or any infrastructure project yeah we have to design that project for a 25 25 year horizon no 20 year horizon sorry it's 20 years so we have to see whether if i construct this bridge right now in 20 years when the traffic is going to increase will this bridge be still adequate yeah so that is why you see the numbers from a road closure perspective from a detour perspective we only look at the current traffic yeah. because that is the only traffic i have to detour while construction is on there. yeah i don't have to worry about the 2043 traffic so from a D2 perspective, the traffic is only going to be 58. This is the only reason we I gave you the information or I gave everybody the information. If somebody asks that question that what is going to be the design year traffic on this road, then that, but it's not really applicable. It will be more applicable for a road widening project where I'm widening my roadway from two lanes to four lanes because then I have to see that whether the four lanes can accommodate that 8,000 traffic. Yeah. If not, then I have to probably convert it into five lanes or six lanes or that matter. It comes more, or it becomes more applicable when it's a road widening project. For a bridge replacement project, I believe um, that it doesn't figure out in the detour aspect of the traffic. The traffic will be only the current traffic that will be used to determine the detour and the ABC construction and the time savings and all of that.